All right, so this is going to be a brief tutorial giving an overview of my workflow in using both Snagit to record online content using Google Slides, or if you use PowerPoint, that works too. And then also how I get that video that I've recorded from Snagit into Adobe Premiere where I can edit it and then finalize it and release it. So um, I'll just go over a quick workflow here. For the first part, I can't really do a Snagit of the Snagit process, so I have to use this webcam to record my screen as I do it because you can't really like record the um, recording scaffolding of Snagit. So um, I'll just show it on the screen right here. So the first thing to do is open the Snagit software. When you launch Snagit, this first menu launches. There's basically two parts to Snagit, the Snagit recorder and then the Snagit editor. So this is the recorder right here. And here you want to select all the options and parameters that you want to change for your video. The important things here are that you record the microphone. If you want to record a webcam and have like that small view of uh, your image in the webcam as well, you would turn this on here, but I usually don't do that. Um, once you set this, you can kind of like leave the default settings and it'll stay the same into the future. So after you have this window up, I usually bring up the slideshow that I want to show. So I made a quick sample slideshow in Google Drive that I'll open up right here. And I'll launch into that first before starting Snagit, because Snagit actually lets you choose the part of your window that you want to show. So when Snagit's open, the Snagit recording window, usually there's this little um, part of the software that can drop down from the top of your screen, and I'm going to click the red button there to start the recording process. And the first thing you need to do in the recording process is select the area that you want to record. And I actually want to cut out that bottom area in case I want to switch programs that won't show up in the recording. So in this case, um, I clicked the area that's within these orange dashed lines, which is basically the whole screen minus that bottom area. It kind of automatically selects different areas as you hover your mouse over those areas. So if there's like a rectangular area that's smaller than this, you can select just that rectangular area. Uh, once you click that record button and select the area of your screen that you want to record, you'll launch this kind of live recording um, menu right here. And we want to record a video, so we'll click this record a video button right here, and that'll initialize the video recording process. And it still isn't recording the video yet. The last thing you have to do is click this record button. Once you do that, you'll actually get a countdown and the Snagit software will start recording. All right, so the countdown just happened. Now I'm actually recording what I'm saying on this machine right here. All right, so the countdown just happened. Now I'm actually recording what I'm saying on this machine right here. So this is a quick overview of my workflow of giving, this is a quick overview of my workflow in recording and editing videos. Once you're done recording, you can press the pause button or if you actually have a second monitor, I usually have another monitor plugged in, you can actually have this whole menu open the whole time just on another screen outside of that area you're recording. But if you press pause, you're not quite done yet, you have to click the stop button to actually finish this recording. If you press pause, you can just keep recording again by clicking the record button again. This will just add on to where you left off, but I'm going to finish recording, press the square. And now you get the second part of Snagit launched, which is the Snagit editor. You can Theoretically, edit the video in Snagit Editor, but it's really, really cumbersome. It's really hard to find locations to actually like split the video. So this is where I want to save this video and export it to Adobe Premiere. So to save this to a permanent location, I highlight that file and go to File and Save As. I want to make sure it's at an accessible location. So I'm going to move it just to the desktop for now for the purposes of this demo. So this is going to be the... Uh, Lecture workflow, MP4 is usually a good file format for this. All right, so there up on my desktop now is this lecture workflow video. Luckily, from this point forward, I can just use Snagit to demonstrate the workflow. So the next thing would be to open Adobe Premiere and then open up that lecture workflow file in Adobe Premiere. So I double click Adobe Premiere. It's already open, so it pops up, but it might take a couple seconds to open on your machine. Then I'd click New Project. So this is a different type of file we're creating now. This is like the project file that's specific to Adobe Premiere. I'm going to call it Lecture Workflow 
as well and I'm also going to save it on the desktop but of course it's going to be a slightly different type of file than the actual video we're creating and then I will just press OK this will launch me into kind of the standard video editing screen when it loads right here all right so the first step is to load in that clip that I previously recorded on Snagit so we go to file import and in this case I saved it to the desktop so I will just move to the desktop there's a couple ways to do this in the sidebar over here and there we see the clip for lecture workflow that I saved to the desktop and I'll load that into Premiere right here it loads into this window in the bottom left that shows all the files that have been imported into this project right now it's just this one so for a given lecture I'll usually just have one file like this or maybe I'll have this file plus a couple demos that I also add in um, with that main file that contains most of the slides and most of the lecture I'll drag it both into the timeline down here on the bottom right and I'll drag that imported clip up to the uh, the other window here in the top left so this is kind of what the basic editing window will look like when you're actually editing a video and I'll explain these different parts briefly so I already pointed out uh, this area surrounded in blue right now this is basically where we have the imported videos right now we have this imported video but this output video in your final video shows up in this window as well so that's what we get right here that's actually um, what you see on the right over here the window to the top left this is basically like the clip preparation window this is where you can um, take smaller pieces of a longer clip and basically move them to the finalized version of whatever you're uh, capturing the top right right here this is like the master monitor of the actual like output video that you're creating and the bottom right shows all the clips that go into that um, final like master video that you're working on so it seems kind of strange to like that I just put this original raw footage into this finalized video and I actually usually start out by deleting this as well you may ask why I do that I found that by importing a video into this bottom right area right away it actually takes all the attributes from that input video and sets up the parameters of the video to kind of match so you'll get like the resolution the frame rate all those things you don't have to set individually they'll just be set to equal whatever you put in there first so now if you're putting in videos of different types we have no videos currently that are going to be attached to this output so we have to start basically at the beginning of this clip that we have loaded into the preview window and take those pieces that we want in our final video and put them piece by piece into this area in the bottom right down here so a lot of the work is actually done in this video in the top left right here where we determine what we want to transfer over to the final video that exists on the right so to watch a part of this video i will press play all right so the countdown just happened now i'm actually recording what i'm saying so I don't want any of that in my final video I can also return to the beginning so this is go to in over here these are basically uh, buttons which allow you to navigate within this video clip whereas these two set kind of like an inset video clip within this video that we've recorded as a whole so I'm gonna return to the very beginning recording. all right so the countdown just happened now I'm actually recording what I'm saying on this machine right here so I want to cut all that I don't want any of that in the video so I'll basically use these two buttons right here to mark what I want to include in my final output video so this one if you hover the mouse over it says mark in I want my video to go to start right about here so I'll click mark in as of now everything after that is included in the sub clip so we have to keep watching from that so input to figure out where we want to stop So after I watched a little further, I found out that I actually repeated something. I want to start this a little bit later than I actually did. So I stalled right there. I'm going to actually put the input there instead. So I click this mark in again and press play again. This is a quick overview of my workflow in recording and editing videos. Okay, so that was like a nice introductory sentence. I'm just going to keep it right there and edit it. So I mark out and now we get just the short segment selected. Um, over here this shows the dur duration of that little sub clip so that's about five seconds and I'm gonna move that over to the final video so if I click insert over here to the right of this preparation window that'll plop this into the main window over here 
So now I can navigate within this main window to see what I have in like the final output video I'm going to have. So this goes back to the in. In this case, that goes to the beginning because I haven't set an in point or an out point. And I can click play right here to see what I just took into this window to the right. Okay. Um, then I don't know exactly what part I'm going to include after that, but I know I'm not going to go forward again. So I'm going to mark the in at the location that I just ended at and go from there. A couple different slides that I'm going to go through right here. So that part isn't very relevant. I'm just going to wait. So I can proceed for And I see that I was close to a location where I want to start, but not quite there. We actually have these two arrows on either side of the play button that allow you to move frame by frame, either forward or backwards. So if I just like started talking and I was like, oh, that's where I actually want to start it, I can navigate with these and listen for when the, my voice kind of um, disappears. I'm actually going to mark the in here. I changed my mind. The next segment, I want it to start right here. Whoops, right here. So once again, um, I actually saw that the screen was uh, showing something quite uh, slightly different than what I wanted, so I moved that to the step two part. So I can proceed forward just by clicking the arrow buttons on my keyboard, and that gets us to step two right here, which is where I'll edit the results of this screen capture in Adobe Premiere. Okay, so that seems about the part where I'd want to cut this next scene. So I put the out right there uh, where I want the quick clip to end, and I click again the insert button to put that back into the main video over here. And then finally, once I have that YouTube video uploaded, there... Oop, so I misspoke again. Again, I didn't really prepare for this, so I just was winging it. <laughs> finally. So I changed that starting point to after that part where I messed up again. Finally, once I have the YouTube video uploaded, I can take that link and plug that into Canvas where students can access it. Okay, that's a quick overview. Um, now I'm going to mark the out after that. That's pretty much the end of those four slides. Okay, so we'd, if you look at the bottom right right now, we basically have the complete video. Using the same controls, I can go back to the beginning. So right here, I'll go, go to in, and I can just watch the whole thing. And to export this, now this is kind of a pitfall I've come across a number of times. You have to make sure that this final video area down here um, is what's highlighted and surrounded by this blue box right here before you export the video. Now that this blue box surrounds that lecture work workflow, I'm going to export the video. I go to File, Export, Media. So here you get to select the format. And the standard I found for YouTube videos, it's a, it's a good combination of file size and quality, is this H.264. It's a certain type of MPEG-4 encoding that keeps the file pretty small. So there's other types of MP4 on here, but um, I'd, I'd just stick with H.264. And if you want to change the name, you can click Output Name and change the name. I'm going to keep it the same, but I'm actually going to move it back to the desktop. Work lecture Workflow Final. Save that to the desktop. And now just click Export, and it'll export to the desktop as an MPEG-4. So the final video is here. It's the same as what we just saw in the sample. This is a quick overview of my workflow in recording and editing videos. So I can proceed forward just by clicking the arrow buttons on my keyboard, and that gets us to step two right here, which is where I'll edit the results of this screen capture in Adobe Premiere. So what you'll see next is a jump to Adobe Premiere, because because I will have edited this before I release it. After the video is finished, I export it into MPEG-4 format and upload it to YouTube. Finally, once I have the YouTube video uploaded, I can take that link and plug that into Canvas where students can access it. The next step is to upload the video onto YouTube. I'll open my YouTube page right here. And once you have a YouTube account, you can go to Create, Upload Video, Select File. And back on my desktop, I have this Lecture Workflow Final. I'll add this to the YouTube video dialog, and I can change the name a little bit. Um, let's say lecture workflow, and I'll just say example for the YouTube video name. And it makes you pick about age restrictions. I'll just say that it is made for kids. 
go through the next, and then you also have to choose visibility, which is whether you keep it unlisted or make it public. I do mine unlisted, so um, mostly for copyright reasons, just in case I put a picture that somebody doesn't want up there that I found on Google Images or something like that. Click unlisted, click saved, and and we end up with a published video, so that gets added to my queue. Now this video is on YouTube, so I can click it, the video link right here to go to the YouTube. This is a quick video. overview of my workflow in recording and editing videos. And finally, once that video is up, you can share it wherever you want by just sharing the link. So you click the share button under the video, uh, click copy, and you can copy and paste this wherever you want. If you paste it into Canvas, it actually makes it watchable in Canvas, which is pretty cool. So I usually just paste mine into a pages page within Canvas where it'll make a little um, screen, embedded screen where you can actually watch the video. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm not going to show the last link loading things into Canvas because I'm sure you all have experience linking to YouTube videos to Canvas or Blackboard or some other system, but that's the basic gist of recording your screen and then editing what you've recorded.